Hello everyone, my name is Matt Scorpion, and right off the bat, I want to apologize just in case you hear any rumblings or booms or this just randomly abruptly cuts out. There's a storm going on, and it sounds like it's going to be a bad one. I don't know how it's going to shape up, but let me go on from there. In addition, I wanted to apologize for my absence from last week for the reset. There was no coverage of the reset, Eververse, or Bound and Sorrow, and there was no TWAB either. I will admit, the first three were all a issue because of audio corrupting and me not wanting to go back and redo it. I just haven't been in a mood to fuff about trying to get these to work. And then in addition to the TWAB, there wasn't really much going on there that was need to know. It was mostly all donations, uh, emblems, and varieties, and a few bugs. But aside from that, into this week and trying to get back on top of things. Obviously, right in front, Saladin has returned for the second and final Iron Banner of the season, so if you want any of his gear, any of his weapons, any of his powerfuls available, I'd recommend you do it. Although, I might say wait until the weekend just so you can knock out all four of his weekly challenges all at once instead of doing each of them day by day. It might be a little bit easier that way. And per the usual, with the addition of an Iron Banner, it is Boosted Valor. But aside from that, going out throughout the rest of the world, we have, for Vanguard, it is currently Insight Terminus for our Grand Masters. Which means... Get the Void, because going as follows, Scorched Earth for more grenades, Unstoppable and Barrier Champions, because Cabal, then we have Chaff for no radar, Grandmaster Modifiers as usual with Match Game Equipment Lock, Extinguished Limited Revise, Mob Champions, and then we have the Arc and Void Shielded Foe, so don't need to bring Solar for anything, and then as well, Cargan Stratagem for Environmental Damage being increased in addition to Void, on top of an already acute Void Burn. So, be very, very careful of the void damage this time around. And I'd also advise you bring some for your heavy. Maybe a bad omens or a royal entry or something like that. Because if you spec out for void, maybe a deathbringer, who knows? But if you spec out for void, it might be a little bit easier to handle. And in addition, if you finish it, you'll have access to the DFA. And if you finish it on Grandmaster, you have DFA Adept. Which is the first time around for the season, and I'm not sure how many more times you'll have access to it before the season comes to a close. So I'd recommend folks get on that right now. And then, nothing new for Gambit, per the usual, but like I said with Crucible, we have Iron Banner going. And as well, per the usual with Iron Banner, it is Rift, and you need four challenges for Pinnacles, as well as a bonus reputation for Iron Banner gear being equipped. But aside from that, it is Steam Scorch, which I'm pretty sure is the second to last or possibly last time Scorch is available. If you want to finish all your seasonal challenges and the usual one that requires you to play Scorch to get one of them, I would advise you do that as quickly as possible if you care about those challenges. But into the rest of the world, for Legends, our weekly rotator rate is back to Vault of Glass, which means every challenge is active, and that also means that Master Mode has returned for this season. In addition to that, all of those challenges can be earned and done for time loss varieties all at once. So if you had zero time lost and then ran this through, you could have at least one of every other time lost. In addition to that, it is intellect focused armor in case you wanted to farm just for the armor. Now the weekly raid in the Dares of Eternity is Grasp of Avarice because, you know, it just came back around to this. Master mode is no different. It will still drop the same amount of pinnacles and it is pretty much uh, just a pinnacle drop for the end, so if you want to go there in that. And while we're here, for Dares of Eternity Hard Mode, it is for our, we our Rotations, Hive, Vex, and Ballast to Arc, just because we're there. But then, that's pretty much it for there. Now, into the rest of the world. For the Throne World, for Master or er, Challenge Mode on Vow, it is Swift Destruction, which is First Encounter. Kill the Abominations within a few seconds of each other to complete Challenge Mode. Gotta do that three times for all three rounds. And for Master Mode... If for all your adept weaponry there, we have discipline focused armor for uh, Vow of the Disciple Master mode. And into the rest of the Throne World biz, Our, that's Europa, that's the wrong world. For the weekly, we do have the Communion, which is the Europa um, mission, in case anyone wanted to do it. But of course, per the usual, it's a long one, so I would advise that if you wanted to farm out, there could be a better week. But if you need to do it this week, you know. You gotta go for it. But then the rest of the stat for Wellspring Attack. It, it starts as come to pass, but then goes for Wednesday, the grenade launcher. Thursday, the bow. Friday, the sniper. Saturday, the auto rifle again. Sunday, the grenade launcher. And then Monday, the bow. So, keeping up with that and just keeping it quickly into the next step. I wanted to mention that 
uh, Lost Sectors. I'll have a visual on screen for these. No longer for uh, Wellspring, just because, you know, we're kind of all adults at this point. If you learn, you learn. If not, you can learn. But uh, for Lost Sectors, some people, even I, still don't know the rotation. So I'm going to start to post a visual uh, provided by shacknews.com that allows us to see where each lost sector will be at least supposedly and guarantee what type of armor will be available for lost sectors each week and every day in that week so i will start to do that that should have started three weeks ago but obviously i stopped doing these videos for a little bit and lastly into our world rotations we have the cosmodrome for the psyop battlegrounds now Lastly, for the seasonal stuff, Bound and Sorrow has so far ended, so in addition to everything else with our challenges, they're going to stop rewarding Figments of Darkness, but also reward Umbral Energy instead. Starting with Shocking Forgiveness, which is basically complete Sever Forgiveness with either an Arc or with Arc subclass and either Arc Kinetic or Stasis Weaponry. Then, with Vestiges of Dread, which is basically collect Petrified Egregore in a very high amount and complete or earn a lot of Vestiges of Dread, which you can pretty much do all on your own without even trying. Then we also have Umbral Focusing, which is another step in the Focus Armor and Focus Weaponry. You just gotta do it from the crown. I don't think it matters which one. So, you can pick Haunted or Menagerie Weaponry. Then lastly, we have Pinnacle, which is basically reach power level 1570 by earning Pinnacle. I will reiterate with this one. This artifact it does not matter. It does not count that power. What matters is this stuff. You got to have all your gear to 1570 throughout all this. You need to have five pieces of 1570 armor and three pieces of 1570 weaponry. Now, of course, throughout the rest of the challenges, when we get to them, let's see. Wide point calibration, which is killing things with trace rifles and shotguns. Bonus progress for rapidly defeating targets and defeated guardians. And lastly, play Gambit until you earn the chain of command ornament from Gambit this week. Now, that is pretty much it, and for Banshee, he doesn't have some bad weaponry, there's some good ones, but there's mostly other ones that are not so great. So we have, spoiler alert, a sidearm, and I'm just going to leave it at that, just because no one actually died aside from Sabbath Boon. Percy's D, which is a stasis kinetic high impact hockey scout rifle, a lot of details, but it's important to cover all of them. Basically, this can roll for good either PvP or PvE rolls, mainly PvE though, but if you want to bring it for Crucible, you are not blamed. It is solid enough there. Speaking of Crucible, Cantata 57, probably one of the best energy hand cannons in the game, considering the rest of the good hand cannons are all in the kinetic slot. Then we also have Feud 55, a pretty solid sniper rifle for more Crucible, but this roll is also good for PvE, although it's often outshined aside from its slot, just because Succession is still in the game, and that is always a great option for sniper PvE-ness. Then we also have Typhon GL5, one of the best grenade launchers that's been introduced since the nerf to aggressive frames to rapid fires, mainly because it has a very good set of perk pools. It's also stasis, so it can, you know, make diamond lances on kill and various other things for builds. And then, of course, we have all of our class swords, which almost exclusively always come with Jagged Edge and their own unique guards for all three swords. But then, you know, from there, it's just kind of a pick and choose of what perks you get, just because sword perks almost never actually make a difference, aside from, you know, a few ammo givers, maybe. But that's pretty much everything for Reset. Now, I wanted to once again apologize for the absence that was issues and just not even wanted to deal with things and my own angst, let's say. But aside from that, um, I should be back on track as usual. I'm pretty sure recording is going as solid because I already beat my computer with a hammer, figuratively. But... With that, my name is Matt Scorpion, and I will see you in the next video.